Howdy there once again, YouTube. Whoa, I don't know what happened there. Well, very, very cold. It looks like a Yellowstone right now. Freezing cold, too. Wow. Icicles growing on the camera, too. <laughs> right now is 12.36 p.m. Pacific Time, February 3rd, 2019. My name, as you probably already know, is Ben Ferriolo, and I vigorously study and analyze seismic data. If you haven't already, please look in the description box below for my website link. It is right below my email address. You should check out my website if you haven't already. You would be very surprised as to what you find. Also, remember how I said I was spending multiple weeks on creating a new seismic events page? Well, I have finally completed it. And here it is. This deals with almost every single rapid fire swarm that has ever struck near West Thumb and Yellowstone Lake in Yellowstone. This page is very long and contains hundreds of plots and seismic images detailing 18 swarms from 2014 to 2018. Look, I'm not even through it yet. Look at all this. And see where it says click here? Well, I kind of made it easier for people to skip to the most interesting swarms. Now, although the page is long, you can quickly skip to the most interesting and impressive swarms here. I am finally done with this page and I'm just touching it up since there are a few typos here and there. However, feel free to come check it out. It also contains my seismic audio video that shows you what all of these 18 swarms actually sounded like. Now, I will leave a link to that as well in the description box below. Also, if you haven't checked out Scott's new channel, then please do so now if you wish. Of course, the link is below. He actually just put out a really cool video here talking about these strange geological features that reside in Washington State, which are features that I never even knew existed until he put out this video. So he's got some pretty good content. So come to his channel here if you want, subscribe, and watch his video. Now the past day or two of seismic activity in the United States has been virtually calm. A little too calm. Actually, in the last night, it kind of freaked me out a lot. Everywhere seems to be much more calm than usual. Well, except for Montana. Here, check it out. Look at how many earthquakes there are in the United States. A very low count compared to normal seismicity. Well, except for Montana. I will talk about and show the data to these Montana earthquakes in just a moment. Notice, however, there were some earthquakes near Petrolia, California. Notice right in this area here. Let's zoom in. See how many that they reported just for the past 24 hours. Apparently, there were three. Now, this is where the Cascadia subduction zone ends and meets the Northern California border right here. The Northern California and Oregon border is right here. Cascadia subduction zone ends right about here, and we sometimes do see some earthquakes near Petrolia, California, right in this area right here. Now, if we look at one day prior to this, this is one day's worth of earthquakes yesterday, a day before what I just showed, we do see some more events in Petrolia, California. I believe there are about six earthquakes in this area here in just one day. Actually, I think there are eight. I think there were seven or eight of them in this area within about a day and a half or so, which I thought was very interesting. Of course, that does happen from time to time, but I haven't seen this many in such a short time period. I mean, they weren't very major, so I just moved on. But something that I noticed right after these earthquakes hit was that right when the seismicity near Petrolia started to calm down and started to end, everything in the United States started to calm down as well. Let me refresh this page just to make sure it is the most recent, showing the most recent earthquakes. Nothing in the past hour at all. As of 12.42 p.m. Pacific Time, February 3rd, 2019, there have not been any reported earthquakes in the past hour for the United States at all. We did have some swarming up near Montana, which again, I will get to in just a second, but look at how sparse. Look at this, guys. I have never, ever in my life, I, I don't think I actually ever, ever have seen it this calm. Wow. San Andreas? Of course, we got a couple earthquakes, but... Uh, my goodness, guys, it's very calm. Very, even Long Valley, even Lassen Peak, Mount Shasta, even all the volcanoes near the Sierra Nevada and Cascade Range are all quiet. Washington and Oregon, all quiet. Again, I've been keeping an eye on the seismic instruments for Newberry and a few other volcanoes in Washington, Oregon, and California. Still, doesn't look like there's been much. 
Uh, I it's very strange, very quiet, except for Montana. Of course, we have a few earthquakes hitting in Hawaii. Even the world right now is very calm. The past 24 hours, the largest earthquake to occur was, let's go here, was only a 5.4 at 35 kilometers in depth in Indonesia, right there. So it is very, very calm. Here, let me put that back real quick. So why is it so calm? Every day we usually see around 100 to 190 earthquakes in the United States alone. And I mean the United States down here. I'm not including Alaska, guys. I am not including Alaska in that count. It's usually around 100 to 190 earthquakes in the continental United States. However, the count today is extremely low. Right now, there are only, for the pretty much the entire United States, there are only, let's see, 58. And there is one down here. So for the entire continental United States in the past 24 hours, there have only been 58 earthquakes. It is possible there were a few other tiny microquakes here and there, but this does reflect that seismicity is very low. Should not be this low, in my opinion. That's just my opinion. So I want to hear what you guys think about this right here. Why is it so calm? And I noticed it started to calm right after there was some swarming right here where the Cascadia subduction zone meets the coast. So I don't know if that's related or not. It may not be, but I just think it's very strange how quiet it is. Also, why did an earthquake swarm just hit Montana? Let's check out those earthquakes now, shall we? I'm going to quickly turn on terrain real fast and U.S. faults. Okay. First off, before I do any of this, actually, let me turn terrain back off. Before I do any of this, there were 14 earthquakes in the past 24 hours recorded for Lincoln, Montana and Three Forks near that area. There appears to be a swarm that started around 1700 and it started with a magnitude 3.9 supposedly at 5.0 kilometers in depth. All three of these are 5.0, exactly the same. There could possibly be some discrepancies with the depths themselves, but we did see some seismicity prior to this, some minor earthquakes, but there has been an increase in seismicity just as of 1700 UTC, February 3rd. So, and I want to zoom in on this just real quick. Where are the faults, guys? I see a fault down here, which is the Canyon Ferry Fault, southern section, right down here. And we have a few other little teeny tiny guys. You, you can see that, right? I don't know if you can see that. There's a few little teeny tiny faults down here throughout the area. Let's see, Helena Valley Fault, let's see, Franklin something fault, and then this one is Franklin whatever fault, Diamond Springs Fault, Helena Valley Fault, very tiny, very tiny faults, but up here, I'm not seeing any fault zones at all. Actually, the nearest fault zone to this earthquake swarm today is, let's see, actually, yeah, it's this one down here, but there's a major fault system up here called the Mission Fault. Flathead Lake section right up here. It splits off into multiple different faults right there. So I thought that was very interesting. It's not really occurring on any given fault that I can name, that I can see. So I'm kind of confused as to why this earthquake swarm is occurring near Lincoln, Montana, which as you guys, if you guys don't already know, I believe in the year 2017, I believe it was near the end of the year in 2017, there was an earthquake swarm in Lincoln, Montana. I'm going to actually start doing some research on that and create a seismic events page for that swarm too. But that's going to take a little while. I'll let you guys know when I'm done with that. But let's turn on the terrain just real fast just to show you where this is. It's happening just south of Lincoln, Montana. You can see the town of Lincoln is right here. It's happening just south, spread out through this area right here near the Nevada Valley and the Avon Valley. Let's zoom in just a little bit more, see if there's any more interesting or important features in this area no no volcanoes no nothing but remember magma can sprout up anywhere people say oh why why would you ever look for volcanic activity if there's no volcanoes in the area well number one there is kind of a volcano kind of near here it's not really near here at all but it's called yellowstone it's actually very far away just saying but still i'm not even talking about just yellowstone guys magma itself is everywhere the deeper and deeper you go, the more likely you are to hit magma. Because really, that's it's everywhere down there, guys. And we do have little pockets of magma here and there that never erupt. That will never see an eruption. Yes, there are pockets of magma all throughout the United States. Especially a very large, deep magma plume rising under the East Coast. But that is for another video. But I'm just saying, I'm just saying, I don't like to completely 
shut out any ideas that, oh, this could be volcanic activity. I'm not saying this is here in Montana, guys. I highly doubt it is. But I'm just saying, always keep that possibility open because magma can pop out anywhere, guys. It, the, uh, the 2018 Kilauea eruptions proved that. It, magma can just pick up and move, leave, and sprout somewhere miles and miles away. It can do that if it wanted to because it's very powerful and it's very independent. And as you know, volcanoes all started somewhere, right? Every volcano in the world always started somewhere, always had a first eruption, right? Well, that first eruption for a new volcano usually has to start where it doesn't look like there's a volcano, right? Like the first eruption ever in Mount Rainier, obviously no one knows when first eruptions are really at all for any volcanoes, but I'm just saying for Mount Rainier, just imagine the first ever volcanic eruption that started to form Mount Rainier. Did it have that typical stratocone? No, the stratocone was built over multiple eruptions. Usually that's how volcanoes are formed. Those big tall domes, those big tall strata volcanoes like Mount Rainier, Mount Hood, Mount St. Helens. They're, they're usually built over repeated eruptions over a long, long, long period of time. Well, what about that first eruption though? How did that start? That's why you always got to keep your eye out for everything and always listen to even the craziest idea because really the truth is sometimes crazier than fiction. And always test everything. Don't take everything at face value. Always test everything. Okay, let's go through these earthquakes real quick. Not related to the swarm. There is a magnitude 1.6 at 11.3 kilometers in depth right here. Here, let me zoom in. I mean, it could have been related, guys. It could have been related to the increase of pressure building towards this main swarm, but I'm just saying it happened a long time before the swarm started. So, at 2216 UTC, there is a magnitude 1.6 at 11.3 kilometers in depth. And then there at 2355, there's a 1.1 at 12.8, a magnitude 1.0 at 4.8, a magnitude 1.0 at 12.3, and then the first earthquake in the swarm, boom, at 1711, 18 UTC, February 3rd, 2019, there's a magnitude 3.9 at 5.0 kilometers in depth. People did feel this. I will get to that in just a second. Then there was a magnitude about six minutes later. There was a magnitude 2.4 at 5.0 kilometers in depth. Nobody has reported feeling that earthquake just yet. Then only two minutes later, actually about one minute and 59 seconds later, there was a 3.3 at 5.0 kilometers in depth. And then about three minutes, actually that's about, I'm going to say three minutes and 15 seconds later, there's a magnitude 2.3 at 14.1 kilometers in depth, 1.8 at 12.8 kilometers in depth, 1.9 at 14.1 kilometers in depth, 2.8 at 5.0, 2.6 at 5.0, 1.2 at 14.6 kilometers in depth. And it's all spread out through this area right here. So, so let's go to the largest event that kickstarted today's swarm in Lincoln, Montana. Let's go to the event page just real quick. And I believe they do have a moment tensor for this. Remember, I'm still learning moment tensors, guys. I'm still learning it. But to me, that looks like a normal tectonic event. Normal tectonic focal mechanism solution. But I could still be wrong, of course. Felt report, 16 people reported feeling this earthquake. 16 people, that's a good amount of people. And they weren't generally too close to the earthquake epicenter. Remember, these are only the reports. Remember, not everybody reports to the USGS. So whenever you see an earthquake felt count that's usually above five, then it's highly likely more people felt it. But even up in Great Falls, even up near Great Falls, Montana, people were feeling it too. So the energy definitely spread far. Again, 16 people reported feeling it. There's the moment tensor. But I wanted to do something else just real quick. Moving on, notice how it says origin right here. You see origin? Well, most people skip past this, but I think this is one of the most important aspects of the event pages for any given earthquake that USGS reports on. Now, once you click origin, please click phases. Now, I'm doing this to analyze the past day or so of seismic activity for the closest seismic station to this swarm. I know I've showed how to do this before, but I like to show it every now and then just so people know how easy it is to find, access, and analyze seismic data. So, once you click origin, then click phase. Actually, no, I'm sorry, I am not right. 
Click arrival time once, just once. And notice how it lists all the stations that recorded this earthquake. Yes, there are a lot of them. Sometimes they don't put every station on here, but almost always they have the closest seismic stations on here that recorded any given earthquake. Now, the shorter the arrival time, almost always the closer the station was to the event, almost always. I was going to gather the data from this channel here. However, it is a strong motion channel. But I want to use a short period channel. So let's use the second closest station, which would be this one right here in the MB network. Here we are at the Iris Data Select URL Builder, which carries all of your data download needs. This is where all of the channel codes come in handy. Remember, if you do this yourself, all letters must always be in caps and there should never be any spaces. The link to this is in the description box below under resources. So let's go back. What did we see? MBLYMTEHZ dash dash. This is the network code right here. This is the station code right here. This is the channel code and this is the location code. So armed with that information, LYMT. Okay, let's go back. So MB. L Y M T dash dash for the location code and E H Z. The most recent data I would like to do for the third, so 02 03 T separates the date from the time. Remember, no spaces, just a T. 00 00 00. And it's always in UTC. The times and the dates are always in UTC on here. Now I know for the UTC date, it is not the fourth yet. It's almost the fourth, but it's not. But this will top it off and give us the most recent seismic data. So look up here. See how that's blue? I'm going to press this. Is it going to turn gray? Yes, it did. It is downloading right now. Here we are in the seismic program swarm. Now let's open that file that we just downloaded from the Iris Seismic Archive. I believe it's this one right here. And yes, it is. Will it open? Is it LYMT? Yes, it is. Open. Did it open? Yes, it is. Aha. Here are the earthquakes. All right, let me zoom in real quick. All right, first off, this is a short period channel, so I am not going to add a filter. However, I'm going to set the overlap to 95 to make the spectrogram look better, which actually I just learned that I could do. Surprise, I've been using this program so long and I still didn't know about that. So let's press OK. Zoom out, zoom forward. Here is, so first remember how there are some earthquakes throughout the day. Here are some of the magnitude, I think it was like, probably a magnitude 0.8 to 1.0 uh, but whatever there's there were some tiny poppings throughout the day right when February 3rd started or UTC actually February 3rd right down here for Pacific time this is Pacific time I have set for these heli quarters here February 3rd this is midnight right here February 3rd this is midnight right here two midnights in one day what well this is the UTC midnight and since we are behind we're very behind. It takes a while for our midnight to come around. So while in the UTC date, it can be the third, it can still be the second, right? This, I believe, is a teleseism. Definitely a teleseism. This right here is that earthquake I just showed. Now let's move forward to the main course. Now, the magnitude 3.9 at 5.0 kilometers in depth is this earthquake right here. Looks like there were a few aftershocks right after the earthquake occurred. Let's change the maximum frequency to 55. If it'll do that, will work. 55. Nope, only goes to 50. Oh, well. But yes, contain very high frequencies. Not seeing any... Not seeing too low of frequencies, actually. Because remember, I always look out for low-frequency earthquakes or low-frequency tremor. That is something to always watch out for, guys, when monitoring earthquake swarms anywhere. Dominant frequencies remain below 5 hertz, but still had power going all the way up to 50 hertz. We already saw that. Let's go back to the spectrogram real quick. Let's go forward. And then there are a few more aftershocks. Another aftershock right there. Another aftershock right there. All carrying high frequency characteristics. To me, this does look tectonic. Yes. This definitely looks like some type of tectonic swarm. Because guys, remember, not everything can be volcanic. Not everything. And let me look for any background tremor. I'm not seeing any low frequency background tremor much at all. A little bit of background noise could be background noise, but I'm not seeing much at all. Don't know what this is. This is very interesting. What's this right here? Huh? Go on, only going to about 300, 400 amplitude count, which is pretty weak, 
but it did stay below the 5 hertz line, staying at about 3.8 to 4.2 hertz. So I thought that was very interesting. Very interesting. Let's go to the waveforms real quick. Here's two. I believe these occurred. Let's see. Yeah, they aren't really occurring in rapid succession. Some of them are. We could see three earthquakes here occurring in about... Three earthquakes in about a minute, minute, minute and a half, which is not crazy at all. Yellowstone can see some pretty energetic rapid fire swarms where sometimes you could see 10 earthquakes in a minute. I mean, sometimes it gets pretty fast. Again, here's the magnitude 3.9. I believe this was a 2.5. Let's see, it's 1719. That's 1719. Come on, go back. 1719 exactly was that 3.3. So 3.9 and then the 2.4. And then the 3.3, so let's go back to the seismic program swarm. Let me zoom out the spectrogram all the way just to take a full look at the swarm real fast. Yeah, it's not looking too crazy. Not looking too, too crazy, but we did see magnitude 3.9 and multiple other 3s and 2s and 1s, of course. So I don't know what this means, guys. I don't know. Could there be more earthquakes approaching or is there another earthquake swarm approaching for Lincoln, Montana? I have no clue. I am not seeing, though. I'm not seeing any dominant, except some of them do have some dominant lower frequencies, yes, but I'm not seeing any actual legitimate low frequency earthquakes or low frequency tremor, which is a good thing. That's a good sign. I always look out for that. Even if someone says, Ben, that's nowhere near a volcano, I say, I don't care. I'm still going to monitor for magma, guys. It could pop up anywhere. Are you kidding me? How do volcanoes form? Just like I said earlier in this video, how do volcanoes form? They have to start somewhere, right? <laughs> and going forward again, here it is on Seismic Station LYMT in the MB network. There's 3.9 going forward. Here is the 2.4. I believe this was the 2.4 right there. Going forward, here's the magnitude 3.3. And then a few other subsequent aftershocks. I'm going to say, let's see, there's 1, 2, 3, 4... I'm going to say five, six, seven, whoops, eight, probably, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, the thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, eh, 20, and then a few more. So probably no more than 25 in the past 24 hours for Montana. But again, seismic activity is super calm for the United States, except for Montana. Montana has pretty much the highest count of seismicity right now, pretty much. I'm not saying that for sure, but I'm just saying pretty much it seems more active, larger magnitudes than anywhere else in the United States right now. And as of the most recent data stream, we do see another strange low-frequency event, which could be a regional earthquake or teleseism. Definitely not look like, looking like a teleseism, though. Let's check out the dominant frequencies just real quick. And it's not a teleseism. No, frequencies are too high, but look at this. Frequencies go all the way down to 0.1 hertz. What? What? So this frequency range goes from 0.1 hertz all the way to 3.3 hertz to 4 hertz. 0.1 hertz to 4 hertz. That is a very broad, but very low frequency range. Very strange, guys. Uh, yeah, I do not know what caused this right here. Very strange. Look at that. Definitely could be a regional earthquake, though, but I'm not seeing anything reported on the earthquake map. So this is up in the air. This is up in the air. I'll continue to look into this. This is the most recent data stream as of 1.05 p.m. Pacific time. February 3rd, 2019. This is the most recent as of the past 15 minutes or so. So the most recent earthquake, however, occurred at 2040 UTC, which I believe is 1.40 p.m. Mountain Time. Please correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe that's 1.40 p.m. Mountain Time. as the last earthquake, only going to about 2,000 amplitude counts. So not too crazy, but again, guys, we do have an earthquake swarm at Lincoln, Montana, which is probably, I'm going to say, 250 miles to the northwest of Yellowstone. So it's pretty far away, but still, we have a swarm, guys. 
One last thing before I go. I forgot to mention that Steamboat Geyser within the Norse Geyser Basin at Yellowstone did see its fourth eruption of 2019, which is actually the 36th eruption since it reactivated in early 2018. Now looking here to the most recent note that I posted, as of right now, the fourth eruption of 2019 is the largest steamboat eruption of 2019 alone. It is still much smaller than eruptions in 2018, however it seems to be stronger than the past few eruptions. Eruptions were getting smaller and smaller, but this fourth one now breaks the idea that Steamboat is dying. Steamboat is alive and well and will most likely erupt again in seven days or so, so stay tuned. The fourth eruption of 2019 occurred at 2221 UTC on February 1st, 2019, which is also 321 PM Mountain Time, the same date. Here is the three plot image generated by myself using the program Swarm and seismic data obtained from Seismic Station YNM at the Norris Museum, which is usually only the only station that can detect these eruptions. Unless these eruptions get around 50,000 to 60,000 amplitude count, then they can show on YNR, which is for Norris also. But usually it is only YNM that shows up again February 1st. Going to about 10,000 amplitude count, again, uh, stronger than pretty much any other eruption in 2019. There have only been three other eruptions, so it's not too much to compare to. Still very small compared to the eruptions in 2018, but it is not dying. I thought they were going to keep getting smaller and smaller until it just didn't erupt anymore, but looks like that's not going to happen. Woohoo! Dominant frequencies rest between about 15 to 25 hertz. Then there's a big dip right there, which you can actually see on the spectrogram. Look at that. Why are the frequencies in this area between, I'm going to say probably between 23 to 28 hertz? They're gone. Pretty much gone, which is very interesting. And then right around 28 hertz, it rises again, peaks right about 30 hertz. So very interesting. And let's scroll down just real quick. Here is the heli quarter for YNM. Right here is the teleseism for the magnitude 6.6 .6 in Mexico. And let me go down. And here is the seismic trace to the steamboat eruption, the fourth one of 2019, which is also the 36th one since it reactivated in 2018. Again, you can feel free to come on my website here and look at all the seismic plots to all the steamboat eruptions of 2019. And if that isn't good enough for you, go back up to the seismic events drop down menu and go to Steamboat Geyser 2018, which shows the plots to every single steamboat eruption ever. So on my website here, I've got every single plot to every single eruption ever since it reactivated in 2018. Pretty cool. Man, it still looks really cold there. So that's it for right now. Again, if you haven't checked out my website or Scott's new channel, please show your support by doing so now. Links are below, of course. So why did seismic activity calm down almost right after a burst in seismicity occurred near Petrolia, California, where the Cascadia subduction zone ends? Could they be connected? Also, why is Lincoln, Montana seeing a large increase in seismicity as of late? If anyone has any information as to what fault line this swarm is striking on, please let me know. Because according to USGS, there is no fault in that area. There is somewhat close, but right where the swarm is striking, they say there's no fault. Could maybe a new fault be forming? Or is something else going on? I will keep you posted and I hope you guys enjoy my content. And by the way, that new page on my website is up. Woohoo! It took me forever to make, so I'm finally relieved to finally finish it. I hope you all have a great day, and remember the truth is considered hater fear to those who hater fear the truth. Ben Ferriolo signing off.